It's a bonus video on a Saturday. What? Hey guys, it's Casey, and today we're going to be doing the Golden Girls book tag. And yes, I am filming, editing, and uploading this all in one day. Come at me. I was tied to do this by Grace. I will link her channel down below. You should absolutely check her out. She is so sweet and so smart, and we read a lot of the same kinds of things. So if you are interested at all in my opinions on books, you should definitely check her out. So this is a book tag based off of the show Golden Girls, and I do just want to say that I have watched this show, but not very much, and I was very young, so I don't remember much about it. So I'm just gonna be going based off of what the questions are. One thing about this tag is the way the questions are, they don't really lend themselves to me recommending fantasy books or even the same books that I usually recommend. So hopefully we can get some new ones in here. So the first question is Blanche, which is a book about exploring sexuality or relationships. And for that, I'm going to be picking Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe. So this is a young adult contemporary novel that I read back in, I think, 2019. And I absolutely adored this. This is a book that I have described as like very quietly beautiful. It is a story about these two boys who get to know each other over the course of a summer. And it's kind of a coming of age story about them learning more about themselves and each other and their sexuality and their identity throughout the course of this book. And it is so sweet. And again, like I said, very quietly beautiful. And this one absolutely explores sexuality and relationships and it's so good. And I don't talk about it enough and I need to reread it. The second question is Rose, which is a book that reminds you of where you grew up. And so for this one, I had a lot of trouble because most of the books that I have right now are books that are very new to me and I struggle to find books with ties to like where I grew up but I think what I'm going to pick for this one is Ink Heart by Cornelia Funka. So this is a book that I adored as a child. I had all three of the books in this series in paperback and then I got these like really nice hardbacks uh, at some point. And honestly, I read, I think, every book that this author put out at the time that I was reading them. And I have not reread this series in years, and maybe I should, but this is, I think, a middle grade fantasy series about this girl and her father who, when they read out loud, the characters from the books come to life. So they literally are pulled out of the story and into the real world. And I remember absolutely adoring this series. So in that way, it reminds me of where I grew up, because when I think about this book, I think about being a child, because this was like my childhood favorite book. So. There we go. The next question is Dorothy, which is a book that makes you feel smarter. And so for this, I was going to pick a nonfiction book. So instead of trying to pick a book that was like really complicated or made me feel smart for having been able to read it or something like that, I picked one of my favorite nonfiction books just generally, and that is We Crossed a Bridge and It Trembled by Wendy Perlman. So this is basically an ethnography and a collection of interviews starting in, I think, 2011 and crossing about like five years of interviews with individuals living in Syria or who have become refugees from Syria. So this really explores the conflict in Syria as well as the refugee crisis, and it's a very human story about this. I remember reading this and being completely moved by a lot of the interviews in here, and I remember giving this five stars immediately. It's been a few years since I've read it, but this really sticks out as one of my favorite non-fictions that I've ever read. So in that way, this is definitely a book that makes me feel smarter. Question number four is Sophia, so that is a book that features someone telling their life story. And for that, I'm going to pick Fun Home by Alison Bechdel. So this is a graphic novel memoir, and I've read a couple of those now, and I actually really enjoy them. So her family grew up running a funeral home that they called the Fun Home, and this explores her life growing up, but more specifically it explores her relationship with her father and any very tumultuous complicated relationship that she had growing up with her family as well as with her own sexuality. So this follows her growing up figuring out who she is and how that relates to her childhood up through her father's death. And I really enjoy the graphic novel medium for telling these kinds of life stories. I think it's a really interesting choice and this one is definitely a very raw exploration of her life. The next question is Stanley which is a book that you love to hate. So I originally was struggling to figure out what I wanted to pick for this because I don't read a lot of books that I end up hating, especially not those that I like want to rant about or enjoy hating, um, except that there is one that I can think of, and it is Edgar Huntley or Memoirs of a Sleepwalker by Charles Brockton Brown. So this is a book that one of my friends picked for our book club because she loved it and everyone in her class hated it when she read it. I hated this book. <laughs> so this is a classic about this man named Edgar Huntley. So he finds a strange man digging in the woods and he goes after him and he follows him because that is suspicious behavior. And then eventually he just gets, and eventually he just gets lost and wrapped into this weird kind of adventure just trying to find his way home. It's wild, it's ridiculous. I hate this man. This book upsets me. 
I'm sorry, Mariah. <laughs> and I guess I love to hate this book because this book is very fun to talk about with her and with my friends that read it. Listening to them talk about the chaotic mess that this book is, is very entertaining. So in that way, it's a book I love to hate. Question number six is Cheesecake, which is a book that you read over and over again. And I don't do that much rereading and there aren't that many books that I've reread more than once, but there is one that stands out to me and that is going to be Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams. I don't know how many times I've read this book, but I think I read it for the first time in high school and I've reread it every couple of years since then. Uh, so I probably read this at least three, maybe four times, which is a lot for me since I don't do that much rereading. So this is a classic absurdist sci-fi about this man named Arthur Dent. And when Earth is about to be demolished to make room for a hyperspace bypass, he and his friend Ford Prefect, who is actually an alien, end up hitchhiking off of planet Earth and it follows their adventure around the galaxy. And I love this story. It is absolutely a comfort read for me. I really enjoy rereading this and even if I don't reread the whole thing, I go back and reread like passages from it and something just about the absurdism and the humor of it just makes me feel like everything's gonna be okay, even though it's literally about Earth blowing up, but still. So the next question is Golden, which is a book exploring aging or the golden years. And for this, I am just gonna kind of rip off Grace's answer because I could not think of anything else either. And for that, I'm gonna be picking Kings of the Wild by Nicholas Ames. So this kind of counts. It is a story about older characters, not really like the golden years or anything like that, but it's about a story of this retired adventuring party who have been split up for years, who have their own children and their own lives at this point. And the daughter of one of the members ends up going missing and he goes around to rally everyone from the old group to get the band back together to go find his daughter. And I love this book. It is one of the most fun books I have ever read, but it really does talk about aging and this group trying to be the heroes that they once were, despite the fact that they are much older now. So in that way, this one works for this prompt, but it is a little bit of a stretch and I'm stealing it directly from Grace. So, oh well. Question number eight is thank you for being a friend and it is a book that features a strong friend group. So you could just throw a dart at my bookshelves, especially my favorites, and probably hit one. Found family is basically my favorite trope. Any book that has found family in it, I'm pretty much immediately going to love. So a lot of my favorite books have a strong friendship group in them. So like we all knew I was gonna pick this, right? So I'm gonna be choosing The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers because this is probably my favorite book of all time. I just, <laughs> so I have talked about this book so much on this channel. I, I was gonna apologize, but I, I'm not sorry. This is a sci-fi book about this, this is an extremely character-driven sci-fi book about this girl named Rosemary Harper who joins the crew of the Wayfarers. So the Wayfarer is a tunneling ship, so they basically punch wormholes through space. And one day they get an offer for an extremely lucrative job that involves them taking a long haul trip in order to punch back to get a new area of space into the galactic government. So this book basically just follows the crew of this spaceship over this almost year long journey and all of the difficulties that they encounter along the way. And it really explores the relationships between these characters and their different cultures and their different values and their relationships with each other as they grow closer and as Rosemary gets kind of welcomed into this family unit. And I love this book so much. It is. Again, I think my favorite book of all time. Absolutely a strong friendship group. The crew of the Wayfarers is precious and I love them and I... Bleh. This had to be the answer for this question. We all knew it was coming. So the final question is just to tag some other people. So I am going to be tagging Kate from The Almost Book Doctor. She is someone that I just recently kind of started to get to know and she is super fun. I really love her energy. You should absolutely check out her channel. All of these will be linked down below. I'm also going to be tagging Nat from Nerdy Nat Reads. So Nat and I don't read that many overlapping things, but Nat and I have been following each other pretty much since I posted my newbie tag. And I think she posted hers like a month earlier. And now that I've finally done a tag video, I can tag hers. And finally, I'm going to be tagging Elsa from The French Book Dreamer. I've been following her for a couple of months, I think. She is so sweet. She's precious. I really enjoy her content. So you should absolutely check those people out, but that is who I'm tagging for this video. So I had a lot of fun doing this tag. Thank you, Grace, again for tagging me. But I think that's all I've got for you guys today. If you want to keep up with what I'm reading, I have a link to my Goodreads down in the description below. But other than that, I'll see you guys next time.